it is my, uh, I hope everyone is safe and uh, unstressful during these tough days of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as we well observe, there have been significant changes in our lives since uh, this year uh, when the unprecedented uh, virus spread globally. Now it is the new normal to see their father and mother working uh, from home and children attending their online classes at home in some countries. However, people living in the other countries have a limit on their engagement in economic and learning activities. Indeed, there is a gap when it comes to resilience between the countries. The digital divide between the rich and poor widened uh, during the lockdown. It is unfortunate to witness many Nigerian boys and girls wasting their time without engaging in learning activities due to the inability to access education materials. Also, due to the lockdown, most of public schools in Nigeria are unable to provide education services to their students. Moreover, the schools are not equipped with proper techniques and instruments to deliver services to students, even if they desire to provide such services. Against this backdrop, Koika Nigeria office is seeking the best practice among the MDAs, state government, and education institution. Also, innovative platform and startup, which have succeeded in turning these challenges into opportunities. Koika opted to formulate the new project for accelerating multimedia education in Nigeria based on the best practice of national champions. As the country director of Koika Nigeria office, it is my great pleasure to host this webinar titled Multimedia Ed Education Acceleration in Nigeria. It is for the pleasure to welcome uh, many uh, Nigerian experts and government officials, and especially SkyCar members to attend this webinar today. SkyCar is South Korean Koika Alumni Association, more than 2,000 Nigerian government officials who attended capacity building program or scholarship program in Korea are joined as a member of SkyCan. Uh, Mr. Love you, the president of SkyCan, I think is joining us now. Thank you for your uh, participation. The webinar holds on today and tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. as Mr. David already mentioned. Uh, today, uh, Mr. Abu Bakar, ICT Director of Federal Ministry of Education will present on implica implication, challenges, and opportunity for multimedia education in Nigeria during the COVID-19. Also, three national champions of state government in Nigeria uh, will present their experience and best practice. Mrs. Polashade Adetisayo uh, from uh, Lagos State and Dr. Joan Oviawe uh, from Edo State, and Mr. Uh, Adebayo Osala from Oyo State. Uh, thank you for your presence and uh, your participation. Koika Nigeria Office also sharing our experience on multimedia education project in Nigeria. Uh, Ms. Mavis, Koika Program Officer, and Mr. Godwin. Uh, we introduce Nigeria Korean Model School project in Abuja. And finally, Mr. Isa Hadi will share his Koika scholarship experience today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Country Director. So, uh, this is a visual meeting, so we can't say clap your hands. <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, once again, thank you for joining. Uh, we're still expecting more people to join, but we're going to go ahead with uh, the program as we've scheduled. Just a quick house rules. Uh, we have the Q&A section, so if you have any question, we'd like you to drop it at the Q&A so that we can answer those questions. And uh, you can also drop any questions you have on the chat, also if you want to use the chat uh, box. If you can't hear us or you want to say anything, you can also raise your hands. There is also an option to raise your hands. So you can also raise your hands. 
if you have any difficulty uh, for our panelists uh, in sharing your screen or, or probably presenting properly, we also you can also uh, put in your questions or chat us up, and then we'll know how to fix that. So now we're going to proceed now to take the first presentation. We're going to have two presentations today, and then we'll have a panel discussion. And then we'll take questions uh, from the attendees today. So if you have any questions, like I've said again, put it on the q and section. So if uh, the director, we have uh, a director ICT, uh, Outback Isa from Federal Ministry of Education, who have joined us already. So I don't know, uh, Albaka, if you're ready, can you turn on your video so we can, can you say hello to the house so we can know you're ready for today's presentation? Good morning and hello to the house. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to uh, leave the floor to you now. So I'd like you to go ahead and brief us on what the Ministry of Education is currently doing, and especially in these times of uh, the pandemic and how we can probably accelerate multimedia education in Nigeria. So go ahead. Yeah, good morning all. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here to share our thoughts and our, what we've been doing to keep education going in this period of pandemic. Once again, good morning to the country director, fellow panelists, and uh, all participants to this uh, webinar. Uh, the webinar is coming at the right time to address our current challenges and uh, how we can mitigate about it. As a Ministry of Education, we have taken some steps and uh, we've had good results, but we can do a lot more. And we didn't plan for this, but our response strategy was uh, I think fairly okay, given the our prevailing circumstances. Um, I will do a, a 10 slide presentation to show what we've been doing. Thereafter, I can take some questions for explanation and then we can share ideas. And with the ministry will also be interested in getting the community of this webinar so that, that it will enrich our thoughts and what we intend to do going forward. Um, once the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a pandemic and the countries begin to shut down. Uh, in Nigeria, the presidential council was immediately inaugurated to take charge of these circumstances and federal government, with his wisdom, immediately closed all schools, including tertiary institutions. So our tertiary institutions were already on strike, literally were on strike. All secondary school, primary and secondary school were immediately shut down. Somewhere in the middle of the exams, Stephen Town exams, we were all asked to shut down and go home. The Ministry of Education, the minister, our minister immediately set up a steering committee, which was better of directors in the ministry, our development partners. Very importantly, UNICEF played a very big role in steering our thoughts what to do. And the ministry quickly came up with the response strategy, which was made available on our website and shared to all stakeholders in the ministry, the educational sector, what the ministry was thinking about, how to respond. Since this is a new thing that we have never thought of, UNICEF and Ministry of Education came together and set up a response, coordinated response strategy. And many of the states came to eat, read it, and based on that, came up with their own state's unique strategies in their own environment. Um, what we also did immediately was to set up a virtual learning platform. We, we thought of it in two ways. If the pandemic lasted for two, three weeks, people can take it as Easter holiday. But if it goes beyond that, we needed to do something to keep children uh, learning at home. So while the, within the three weeks, we came up with uh, some virtual learning platform. We got some people to work with us. People that already have developed their virtual learning platform to work with the ministry, and they made an offer to the ministry for free. So we had e-learning platform set up on our website, which was uh, still there, www.education.gov.ng. And this learning platform 
but for different range of people, primary schools had their section, secondary schools had their section, university have their own section, and many other people had their own section. And we're also fortunate, we did discuss with the telecos, telephone company in Nigeria, we wrote all of them about the possibility of helping by carrying, by providing data for students that will visit those sites. And we are graciously fortunate that Airtel Nigeria and Nine Mobile immediately came to our rescue and they provided free bandwidth to any student that was visiting those particular websites. We kind of grouped the websites. If you go to visit education websites, all the educational websites were there. And these telecom companies graciously agreed to anybody who is visiting those websites for zero um, bandwidth. And this really helped us greatly. The e learning platform we developed was, was more like a model for states. Many states log on to it, so what we did, and replicated the same thing in their states. Um, a lot of, we have about 33 states that had the one form of program or the other. Uh, website we had the uh, lesson timetable which was shared with anybody who was interested in it. Many students produced their TV lessons, TV program, uh, programs, lessons which they aired on TV and radio. There's a general belief that uh, internet penetration in Nigeria is maybe students have access to internet are around 25% of our total population. So that is the challenge. And I guess that's why many states opted out to use radio, because radio have more penetration and perhaps many people, many families have access to radio. Implication of COVID-19 to education is in many forms, some we can't imagine. Students were abruptly stopped and horribly dispatched home to their parents while in the middle of writing several time examination. Um, because of that, all activities in schools have been stopped. And now that it's dragging longer than we thought, of course, it has an inherent uh, implication. Number of our school dropout students may be a lot more. How do we, how will the future of the school calendar looks like? When we resume, hopefully, end of the year, are we going to continue with last time? Or are we going to start a new session altogether? These are all the things that, uh, Government is grappling with so much times we to say, what do we do? And then, but we've been working greatly closely with PTF to advise us on what to do and how to do it. One of the other things the ministry is doing is sensitizing students, parents, teachers on the effect of COVID-19. We're also thinking, if our schools resume, what do we need to do to prevent the spread of this 19, COVID-19? Well, it is generally known that uh, children are not too susceptible to it, uh, but can carry this thing back home and infect their parents or their grandparents, and that has the consequences. One of our thoughts is that how do we develop a response strategy? And if this uh, occur, what do we do? And we're trying it out with the current examination that is going on, the WIEC, because of the circumstances, we have to open up school for the senior classes to write WIEC. Two things are happening. What is the impact? How do we manage if there's an outbreak? And because this is a smaller number of people, about 1.5 million, 1.6 million people are writing WIEC, as it started yesterday. We're doing a study to find out, will there be any spread? Will there be any spike? Or, and students contact it in the examination hall and take it back home. What happens? So all of us are in this study now trying to find out how do we respond in case we have that spike. But uh, these are things we are doing at the ministry and it's not a general knowledge, uh, general, general information because we need to develop strategy of how to respond. For instance, do we develop, uh, we are thinking of getting isolation centers in almost every town can we use our schools, dormitories as isolation centers every time if we have a spike? What is our capacity for testing and all that? These are all discussions going on with PTF to strategize. And if we are successful, we don't have any huge spikes after this WIAC examination, 
then maybe we can begin to consider reopening school for other classes. But these are just uh, our thoughts and what we're doing currently. Now, challenges and lessons learned. Inadequate ICT infrastructure for assessing online educational material. Like I said earlier on, the general belief of ICT penetration, internet penetration in the country is 25%. I have my doubt about those statistics because I want to believe the internet uh, coverage of Nigeria should be within 60 to 70%. But that is just internet availability. Now, poverty level, how many students or how many parents have access to buying tablets or phones for their kids to use? Those are discussion for another day. And I think those should be part of our focus of what to do. High cost of funding of education programs via radio and TV. Is it sustainable to air education lessons on television and TV, knowing our peculiar challenges of electricity, lack of uh, electricity, and even the cost of running this program? These are things we are also doing a review to find out how much is it going to cost and how effective. And very importantly, are we actually delivering lessons to kids? Are they learning anything from it, or is it just an entertainment show? And non-availability of tablet and phone to a large number of students. We, do, we also appreciate that a lot of our students living in the rural areas will not have access to tablets and phones. So how do we bring this large number of people into, into the fall of e-learning platform? What the ministry is thinking is uh, teacher training. If we can get a lot of our teachers, even those in rural areas, digitally literate and equip them with tools, then we greatly believe that can improve the whole lot of students. Every student doesn't have to have a laptop or a tablet phone or a phone. If the teacher has this equipment, then we believe that uh, in the phase of uh, teaching and learning. Okay, director, sir. Director Isa, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, because we have a little bit of time constraint, can I ask you to wrap up in one minute? Because we will still have to ask you, come back to your presentation, ask you a couple of questions. But we'll also have other sections that people are presenting. Can I ask you to wrap up in one minute? Okay. E-learning may just be a new normal for education across the globe. We are not exception. So what we, what we are thinking in the short term and the long run is to build that infrastructure for the e-learning. The ministry is already on the road to building an education cloud. Have all the resource materials from pre-primary schools to university. If we have that, then we are now level battling to train our teachers to have access to this platform and they can use it. Uh, the actual plan, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just share my presentation with you, then you can share with the participant. It's a privilege being here. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll be allowed to take any question that comes up with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for the excellent presentation and sharing what the ministry is currently doing. And so we'd like you to hold on now. I'm going to bring in uh, Dr. Mohamed Issa. Uh, Director of Policy Planning and Research Statistics, uh, which also in the FCT Education Secretariat. Can you say hello? Hello. Uh, all right. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, good morning, everybody. So, now uh, we've listened to what uh, Director ICT have just briefed us on. And I'm also yes. going to bring you in now. Uh, yes. Both of you together because uh, you're both in the federal. So I'm going to ask, we're going to ask a couple of questions. So like we've said, the essence of this uh, program, this webinar, is to see how donor agencies like us can collaborate with what the ministry, uh, the federal ministry, and the state as well is currently doing to see how we can accelerate uh, multimedia education in Nigeria. And the only way we can do that is to have this discussions like this so we can understand your priorities, your quick wins, and your long-term goals. This is why we are exactly. doing this. Exactly. So, now, so now the director already briefed us. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Uh, the first question, uh, we go to the, the director, ICT, and then I'm going to come back to you to ask you a couple of other questions as well. So one of the okay. first things we want to find out, uh, during your presentation, you said you collaborated with uh, some telecom uh, agents, uh, telecom companies like 
Nine Mobile and Airtel, who provided uh, a free data assets to the e-learning platform that you're already collaborating with some private agency, right? So one of the yeah. things we want, one of the things we wanted to find out is uh, based on your experience, what are the things you considered in do, making such arrangements? So that what we are asking that is if we think of uh, supporting similar kind of program in Nigeria, what are the things to really consider when we want to make such arrangement? Is it open? Can such arrangement be done again and again, or it's just a one-time, one-off thing that can be done? Because we are looking at accelerating this reaching out to rural communities and all of that. And also issue of electricity is also there. And like you said, data is hard, but people live in the rural community, in case they don't have access to uh, data, you have to use other means to reach them. What are the things we need to consider in collaborating with telecommunications and other uh, private agencies in terms of making data much, much easier in this platform and all of that, so we can build that in into our own planning? Uh, well, uh, for us, we have, we're looking at it in two directions. One, let's, if we can build an education cloud that is purely educational and everybody has the opportunity of storing this information there, then we know we have a website that has all educational information as far as Nigeria is concerned. Then it's easier to negotiate with the telecom to say, for anybody who is visiting, visiting those sites, can you take it for free? That is one way of thinking about it as a corporate social responsibility. One other thought we have, but these are just our thoughts, we, we, we didn't get to that level. Government can try to give a tax holiday or a rebate tax to telecoms to encourage them to get there. These are all other options. Or can we do a deal with telecom to say anybody who is a student, so we are developing a database of the entire students of this country. Anybody who is a student who is in this database, can you sell 10 gig for him, for instance, for 1,000 Naira? These are all the three options we are looking at to be able to say, okay, fine. Can you make data available? Can students have access to these websites for a minimal cost? But because of the pandemic and everybody was trying to help me, everybody was trying to kick in, I guess that was why the telecoms offered to give us those uh, data for free. For instance, currently MTN is doing something. If you are visiting those data, they give you 500 MB free every day. We don't know how long that is sustainable and how far they can go. But like I said earlier, that is the concept we are looking at. Now for students in rural areas, like I said during my presentation, the way to go is by equipping the teachers. If you have a teacher in a school that has a laptop or a tablet that he can and charge using solar, and he has a mini projector he can use, he can take a lot of students at a time. Of course, the pandemic team doesn't allow people to come together, but if you don't appreciate, if you have a very good projector and a laptop, so the way to go may be training the teachers to be able to be digitally literate and equipping them with, the, with uh, equipping them to be able to do this presentation in remote and rural areas. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, yes, perfect. That, that answers it. Okay, so now uh, we have a couple of questions that there are a couple of questions that I would like to ask. Uh, but this question, I'd like uh, Dr. Ladan to probably address this because uh, they are the he's working on policy planning and research, so. I like him if you can address it. So, one of the participants uh, attendees is asking, which is also part of the question we have here. So, I'm just going to take that. So, what is the ministry doing to ensure that most students and pupils get relevant tools to participate in e learning? So, you've already talked about it uh, a little bit, like the collaboration you have with uh, MT, uh, Night, uh, Nine Mobile and Airtel. But I'd like uh, Dr. Ladan to portray a little bit more on that. And also, if you can talk about a little bit more on the mechanism. Uh, that you include, among other things, to check participation level and the continuity. So how do we check participation level and the continuity of this program? So I would like uh, Dr. Madan to address this question as well. Yes, good, good morning, House. I think uh, my brother from the Federal Ministry of uh, Education, I think has mentioned some of the points. We at the Federal Capital Territory, planning is, very, is the key and it's very important. And uh, we are looking beyond COVID-19. 
because right now we are developing a content that will, the continuity aspect will continue with it even after the COVID-19. Now, thank, thank God for uh, our teachers who have been uh, uh, very on the capacity building of this e-learning of a thing. Our schools have a different platform of reaching out to their students, even before the COVID-19. All our schools are linked up through WhatsApp and other social media in, meet, in uh, meeting their students during holidays. So this COVID-19 has, has opened a lot of window and has and, uh, put, putting us on the right track to continue what we have started in reaching out to our students, even during vacation. And uh, when the COVID-19 is pandemic uh, uh, came in, we didn't relent. The schools, uh, with the help of the uh, e-learning program, were able to reach out to all the students, except with the few that is hard to reach areas. And that's one linked us to a visit, uh, to undertake a visit to Niger State, which is a uh, part of our state, uh, uh, boundary. Where we went there, studied their own system, see areas of collaboration, and thank God as we came back, all those hard to reach areas within the Niger State as a wing, we were able to assess this our programs. Okay. Thank you very much. So one of the questions we would like to also find out because looking at your presentation that you also sent to us, could you walk yes. us a little bit more in terms of uh, teachers training and all of that? Is it part of what you learned from your visit in Niger State? How you, because it's a new technology that has come up and I'm yes. sure most of our teachers probably are not conversant with uh, using this uh, collaborative platforms. Is there any yeah. kind of uh, training that you put together to encourage teachers and is there any way that you can get probably donor agencies to collaborate in that regard? Yes, we, right, right now, the, thank God for the Nigerian Korea International Corporation for the school they built for us in the federal capital, which house all this multimedia uh, equipment that are needed for this program. And that was where we use in training and still we're using it for training and retraining of our teachers. And for those teachers that have gotten the opportunity to travel to Korea for, for training are the ones we are using now because they have the knowledge and other teachers too share experience with them. And uh, with that, we don't have problem of uh, uh, teachers who are now, because right now we have drawn a timetable and the teachers are being uh, invited and trained in series. And we hope by the end of the day, we'll be able to train more and more teachers who key in into this e-learning of a thing. Okay, so let me go back to Dr. Isan, uh, so to Director Isan now. So could you walk us through uh, just one more time the, if there's any education policy that we put together in terms of this multimedia uh, collaborations? Is there any policy in that regard? And also what are the quick wins? What are the quick wins that the Ministry of Education is really looking at if somebody's coming in? You, I know you've talked about uh, building, uh, if you can have a platform that can be built just for e-learning, but is that the quick wins that the Ministry of Education is looking at? And if there's any policy that we set up in terms of multimedia education in Nigeria? Yeah, we have the response strategy that we developed immediately the COVID-19 pandemic started. On our website, it addresses what the issues are and how to how to mitigate against it. And our thought is this, um, if you do a teacher training, the education cloud, that like I call it, is our quick win. If we can have education cloud, that have all the resources available, then we know we, we, we have a, it's like a big library that anybody can visit. Now, then teacher training will be our second quick win. Because if, if, you, if, you, if you digitally taught, if you teachers are digitally literate and they don't have where they can get materials, you still haven't done anything. 
So our first quick win would be the building of the digital cloud. And that cloud will be available to everybody in this country. All states will have access to it. And for instance, what Lagos State is doing, what FCT is doing, what Kaduna State is doing, we can also, they can also collaborate with that cloud and store their materials there. So we have this big library that have everybody's digital content. Then we now begin to think of training teachers to have access to it. When their students already have access, students will have access to it. Now I think if we can if we can concentrate on, for instance, having the digital cloud up and running and help all the states to have their materials available on cloud, then that will help. And why I keep referring to insisting on this digital cloud thing is that if you have all the materials in one cloud, then it's easy to negotiate with the telecoms to say, anybody who is visiting here, do it for this fee. But if we have different small, small clouds here all, all over the place, it will be difficult to negotiate with the telecoms. I don't know if that makes some sense. Yes, yes. But then, these are the two quick things. Digital cloud, teacher training. Because we need to be able to bring our teachers to far, and then we can now worry about devices, but now with the tablets, a small tablet, a small phone, it's faster than the computers of, of, of years back. You have an Android phone, you have a, a, a something like this. This is a protector, you have a three hour battery life. If I have this with my laptop, with my phone, I can teach anywhere. And the lumen is good. I'm sure we can come up with things like this and keep our teachers with things like this that can be able to. If you're under a tree, you can deliver lectures, you can deliver uh, teaching and learning. So these are the things I think we need to maybe our quick wins for now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just a follow-up question on that, uh, Director Isa. Someone is asking, uh, I think the president of alumni uh, is asking, Rabbi SK, is asking that if there is any sensitization program that was conducted for both uh, students and teachers, because most of these things are being put on your website, but uh, like you know, uh, not everybody probably have access to the website. Is there any form of uh, a campaign or a promotion that went on to like encourage or to let people know of what is going on, like what the ministry is doing and the rest of yeah, it? Well, there was, there was a campaign, but not really a campaign as such. We have a forum of all commissioners of education in Nigeria. We have more than 40,000 followers on our social media handles. We we'll have a forum of all vice chancellors, both local and private. We, through those forums, we made them understood what we were doing. And um, it was also in two folds. The ministry was making this available as a model for states to look at and do same. So it's a bit difficult to be able to narrow down to, to say what is our uh, reach. But we did have, because uh, in one of the websites, we have more than a million leads of students uh, having access to it. And we have our two websites with more than a million leads. I don't know what the states will report in terms of people that have access to them. But like I said, generally, there's this belief that uh, internet coverage or students that have access to internet are just about 25% of uh, population. So uh, that gives room for a lot of more things to do. But we did uh, publicity as much as we can. And very importantly also, I just remember, during all the press briefing, PTF press briefing, our minister was there to say what we were doing. And a lot of the newspapers and the TV stations carried, when we started this uh, collaboration with the it was, on, it was on the pages of the newspaper. So we didn't need to do specifically adverts to say this is available, people can use it. We thought that was enough advert given the current circumstances. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Just, uh, I have one more quick question for uh, Dr. Ladan. Then I will bring in, a, uh, I'm gonna bring in a director of teachers development from UBEC. But Dr. Ladan, you mentioned that one of the things you did was to use the facility that was provided by the Korean government to, yeah. uh, yes, to both uh, train teachers and develop content that uh, yeah. multimedia. Yes. So, could you uh, probably? I, I was who are meant to understand that this content are meant to be aired on television and on radio. So, if you can probably brief us 
a little bit more an update on that if it's being done currently and what is the cost involved so that we can see if it's something that uh, we can talk to us in our own assistance as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, let me digress uh, just a little about the policy because you talked about policy. We in the Afra country, we have a policy, policy, ICT policy, which is this one. And in it, there is a recommendation that all our schools should be ICT compliance. And uh, to the glory of God, I think uh, all our schools uh, ICT compliance would have laboratory, ICT laboratories is all our schools. And uh, thank God for NCC, Nigerian Communication Commission, for providing uh, uh, computers and uh, iPad and laptops for some of these schools to develop their ICT skills. And then for the program, I think uh, we used the Nigerian Korea International School, Model School to train our teachers on the e-learning uh, uh, e learning uh, at the program, which we we have done the recording there. We have selected the teachers from different part, uh, from different schools, plus the ones in the Korea school themselves. And we did the recording, we did the uh, addition and the editing of the program of all the lessons, about 125 lessons, which were done there. We, we did the edition, we have packaged them ready for presentation or airing. Now, the no government uh, uh, bill process, which the file, the file and the program have been submitted to the highest authority for approval for the area. And as I mentioned earlier on, that meanwhile, all our schools have their own platform of reaching out to their students. So this one that we did in Korea school is to harmonize all this program together and then become a one full package that will benefit the students even beyond COVID-19. Okay, so the program is on. Okay, so the program is on. We have met with all the radio stations that we are going to use for the airing and the television stations. We have done the costing and we have presented it to the authority for final approval. Okay, so a quick question would be what is there any sustainability plan being built into this? Like, will there be budgeting and location going forward and all of that? Or it's just. Yes, that is, that is why we have, uh, we, the plan we have is beyond, beyond COVID 19. It is not going to be only uh, dedicated for this period. It is for this period and beyond. Even after the COVID-19, we package these things, uh, develop them in a, a, a macro team so that we will send it to schools for continuous, having a continuous uh, usage. Okay, thank you very much. So yeah. now let me bring in uh, Director of Teacher Development from UBEC. Uh, Smela, if you can tell us a little bit more, if there's something UBEC is doing with the state so that we can see if it's something that we can leverage on with the state as well. Can you give us a little bit uh, more what UBEC is doing with the state? Director Smela. Yeah, hello everybody. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Yeah, I've had a lot of uh, challenge with uh, the network over here and I hope I'll be able to make my presentation without any interruption. The first thing I need to say is that UBEC is an intervention agency. It is supporting the states in driving basic education in Nigeria. The responsibility for the provision of basic education, that is primary and secondary, junior secondary education, is that of the states. The federal government is only supporting them so that we can fast track the implementation of uh, the UB program. So as an agency, we coordinate, we support, supervise, we advise, and we monitor activities. And this is essentially what we did as a result of uh, the closure of schools when uh, states started to uh, provide some learn at home programs. It is interesting to note that initiative was seized by the states. Within the first week of the closure of space, about three states had come up with their plans, 
indicating what channel they were going to use, what classes they were going to address, and uh, the delivery schedule, that is the timetable. They all embark on aggressive sensitization and publicity to reach the children and the learners and, uh, and their parents. At our own level, we engaged all the states, drew their attention Hello, Director Ismaila, can you hear us? ...to the necessity of providing some form of learning to the students as they were at home. I'm not sure. Hello? Yes, go ahead. There's a little bit of challenge, but we can still hear you. Go ahead. Director the commission reached out. The commission reached out to all the states immediately and challenged them to provide for the learners at home. And uh, we immediately told them what some other states were doing from uh, where they could uh, share some uh, best practices. We advised them to adopt a multi-sectoral ap collaborative approach. For example, the State Ministry of Education should work with the State Ministry of from uh, inflation so that they can have access to the radio and uh, the television uh, services. Because virtually all the states were doing, were providing content either via radio or television or both. That was extensively used in all the states of the, in most of the states in the, in the, in the Federation. But in, in addition to that, we have readjusted the funding arrangement and provided some financial support to states for three things. Number one, to sustain the Learn at Home program, which they had started. Two, to train teachers in preparation for the opening of the schools. And three, to buy some, some sanitation um, items to be distributed to, to, to schools. Uh, we, we, we think that there has been some level of success. Of course, there were challenges also. In the first place, a large number of the children were having their first experience with independent learning. That is, learning using radio and television. Many pupils and students at GS level were having their first experience at that level. And it also showed that this, these channels can be used for mass education. And I think the commission is already uh, leveraging on that to see how we can use these channels to reach out to the out of school uh, children. Uh, states were able to respond very promptly to the emergency, which I think is something we need to commend, for, uh, commend them for. And we also found that parents became more involved in their children's learning and providing support because most, so most of the children had to use their parents' uh, devices. And of course, the, some development partners and private uh, content uh, developers also joined and put their, uh, their content either on video, you could, which you could access through YouTube or on, uh, on, on, on the web itself. There are a number of challenges um, which I think we need to, to talk about. The takeoff time for this exercise varied from one state to the other. By the, by the end of June, one or two states were still unable to put anything on air for the learners. And of course, the major problem they told us they had was finance, that they were not able to secure funds from their chief executives. We also need to be very, very mindful as to how we um, celebrate the success of, the, of this exercise, to remember that some children were left out of the whole exercise, and you could, come, you could see them in every state. Radio service in some states did not cover the entire state. 
television service in some states did not cover the entire states. So there were children in some remote areas that could not be brought on board to, to join this uh, um, the exercise. Uh, what do we think we should do uh, moving forward? Well, as I have said, we have encouraged the states to, to sustain the program and beyond COVID-19. Because what we are thinking and what we want the states to also buy into is that opportunities should be provided for learners to learn at their own time, especially after school and during holidays. If ever we are coming back to have this similar experience, which I don't hope we'll do, we are not going to be taken by uh, surprise again. There is an urgent need to improve the national infrastructure to provide a variety of uh, learning options. I commend the states that said we are doing uh, online learning, uh, but I think we also need to understand that it constituted a big burden for the parents that had to purchase uh, data for the children. And in fact, there were constant complaints by parents that it was getting, I mean, it was placing a, lot, a huge uh, financial burden on, uh, on them. And from my own understanding, subscription for data in this country is a little bit high. And uh, I don't think it's everybody that was in a position to, um, to access this. There is also the need for training of teachers in e-learning uh, content development and e-learning uh, teaching. Uh, again, this was an area that had not been given adequate attention. And uh, what many of the, of, the, of the states had to do, that's why they had to just carry teachers to a, a studio, present uh, some lessons and record and uh, play back on, uh, on radio or television. I think we need to have um, a program through which teachers can be trained on online content development and online uh, content uh, delivery so that occasionally we can blend this with the face-to-face -face mode that we are very familiar uh, with. Uh, we have embarked on uh, a monitoring exercise. Uh, some of our officials are going into the field as from, uh, as from this week. They are actually in three uh, states now to go and assess the impact. I mean, to go and assess this, uh, this program that uh, the states were, were running. Our emphasis in this exercise is to find out to what extent the majority of uh, the children were brought in. So the monitors are going into rural areas to, find, to chat with parents to find out if they had any idea at certain programs we are being run for their own children, and in what way they were able to support the, the, um, the children. Uh, we expect that as soon as the results of uh, the exercise is turned in, we'll be able to share this with uh, other stakeholders. Except if there are questions, I would want to stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for that elaborate explanation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of questions that have been asked already on the q and I'm sure our panelists, you can see some of those questions. Some of them already have been answered when uh, the other panelists were speaking, but let's take some of the ones that are not answered. Probably we'll grow, we'll up a bit. Let's go back to the beginning. We'll take some of those questions. Uh, someone is asking, so anyone that relate to you, I'm sure probably you can just take it. See, any plan for the ministry working to ensure that inclusiveness of disabled children, especially those with hearing or visual impediments. So while we are considering all of this multimedia, are we also considering our children probably that are disabled? Is there any uh, innovation we are bringing in to ensure that they can also not be left out on this or the new level of education system? Then there's a question on many teachers are not computer literate, especially teachers in the unity schools. What is the Federal Ministry of Education? Uh, what is the Federal Ministry of Education is doing concerning this matter? So I'm sure probably the director will have answered part of this, probably can take that in his final thoughts. And then there's another question from Janet. Uh, 
is asking, are there a grading system already in place developed during this period? Yeah, is it transferable to a conventional learning? Uh, or so we can overcome this kind of situation. So probably, can we build in the grading system into the platform that is being developed? I think that's what the question is really about. Or is it just about learning? And that's it. Can the grading system be built into it as well? And then I also want to find out, is there any timeline in terms of the digital cloud that the Ministry of Education, the director have talked about, do the ministry have a timeline they are looking at so that we can also, that will also help partners that want to probably support that initiative to know how to come in and when to come in. And then there's a question also from one of our attendees, Nafisa is asking, with regard to the study on students currently, is currently, with regard to the YEC, uh, with regards to the study on students currently undergoing YEC, can Mr. Issa share any information on this? Is it being conducted by Federal Ministry of Education? What are the timelines with state reports? Will the state report be publicly made available? So what is being done currently? Can we, is there a way to have this report made available so that people can also have access to it? And then finally, we're going to take one more question, but someone will help us take that question will be a participant from Korea. But before I do that, can probably, can I ask uh, sure. our director, uh, Ismaila, to respond to some of the questions that have been asked and also our director from Ministry of Education. Well, I, I think, um, let, let me also make one, one, one point very clear, that the state programs were addressing different set of learners. I think because of the emergency nature of uh, the closure of schools, um, not many states had program for all the classes from primary to GSS. Some states were focusing on the set of students that are currently writing exams or preparing for exams. Some focused only on primary schools without anything for GSS. And others focused on, uh, you know, well, from primary to, to GSS. The content of the program itself was not a continuation of what they would have been doing if classes were not, uh, if schools were not shut. I remembered very clearly that an attempt was made by, I think, the private schools to continue the third term through the offer of online programs. And I remember that the federal government warned them or cautioned them not to, suggesting that when they were conscious of the fact that not all the children will participate in such learning, and because they didn't want any child to be left behind, it gave an indication that when schools resume, adjustment might be made to the school calendar to cater for what would have been covered in the third, uh, in the third term. So when we are talking about grading, it is good. I believe that for many states, it is difficult to apply here because the idea for many of them is to simply occupy the children during the lockdown not to continue what they would have been doing if there was no lockdown. That's, that, that, that got across a good number of, uh, of, uh, of states. With respect to the issue of teachers that are not uh, computer um, literate, well, this is supported by the personnel audit that the commission conducted in 2018. A large number of the teachers are not computer literate. But these are mostly those who had spent more than 30 years in service. The graduates of the colleges of education and university uh, graduates in the last one decade, I should say, are by, 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 the, by the nature of the, of the program they are running, are expected to use uh, their computer. So the ones that are coming out of college in the last 10 years, I believe, are computer uh, literate. But if you see somebody who is not computer literate, it means he must have been in service for upwards of 30 to 35, uh, 
35 uh, years. And with time, of course, they will move out of, uh, out of service. The younger ones, we, we join them, and not, we are not going to have that problem. But even then, since the commission is providing financial support to states to train teachers, we also ensure that a component of the training focus, uh, focuses on uh, um, acquisition of uh, digital lit, uh, lit, literacy. And right here now, I'm in Kaduna with a, a team drawn from uh, NTI, the Teacher Registration Council and UBEC. We are working on a program that we want to develop some online programs for teachers for professional uh, development. So I think we are moving in that direction. But as I said, we recognize that there are teachers in the service that don't have access, they don't know how to use computer and uh, they may have to be trained. But I believe that with time, the majority are like, is likely to be in the group that can use a computer. I think these are the two issues I want to address here. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, because of time, we're going to move in now, uh, move on to that section, but I want to say a big thank you to uh, Director Issa uh, from, from Federal Minister of Education and also Dr. Ladan, Director from uh, MCT Education Secretariat and also to you, Director of Teacher Development, uh, Dr. Smela. Thank you very much for your thoughts. These are the things I'm going to put, uh, send these recordings as well to you so that uh, probably you can also use it. But this will help us in our planning stages as we look forward to collaborate with either UBEC or the state or federal minister of education in developing uh, new projects in line with uh, uh, the multimedia education. But quickly, I want to uh, probably answer a question. I want to. Okay, so we have uh, one of our project directors that actually. Uh, was very, he was one that actually managed the Nigerian Korea Model School project throughout uh, the period of implementation. He's joining us now from Korea, uh, that is Professor Jay, joining us now from Korea. And there's a question that's relating to that which uh, someone has asked, which I'd like him to answer. But first, Professor Jay, can you hear us? Professor Kyung. Yeah, Jay Kyung, that's his name. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> All right, okay, Professor Kyung, good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. Okay. Fine, thank uh, you. All right, thank you. Then we're going to bring you in to uh, talk a little bit more, but there's a question that been asked uh, regarding uh, Korea, which I'd like you to address. Uh, one of our participants is asking in Korea, there's a similar cloud uh, system called EBX, the Education Broadcasting System. Said uh, he wants to find out, he's curious to find out if this technology can be transferred to Nigeria and uh, guiding the proposal that Mr. Issa has talked about regarding developing a, a cloud system. And then secondly, he said, my concern is not much about building the education cloud infrastructure, it's more about sustainability. I'm curious if the sustainability uh, is something that is already being considered and what are the plans in place to mitigate potential issues. So, Professor Pion, can you talk to us a little bit more about the education broadcasting system in Korea and if we can something that we can probably uh, adapt in Nigeria system. I think EBS uh, is an education uh, broadcasting system uh, which is now currently available for being implemented for you know um, you know COVID-19 COVID-19 situation. Uh, basically um, the EBS system is now uh, running for uh, primary uh, students uh, primary one and two, um, you know, because they are still young, very young. So um, the EBS TV is now, um, is, you know, service to the, um, you know, primary one and two, the most especially. Uh, if, um, you know, children are more than, uh, you know, primary three, then, um, you know, basically uh, students are, uh, you know, uh, required to request you to, um, you know, uh, do their own um, uh, learning based on the EBS online system. Um, you know, you know, uh, EBS online system. You know, basically, and uh, normally they are connected to the uh, you know, uh, you know, online platform. Not basically for TV system. 
So if they are more than uh, three, then basically they are uh, taking uh, relevant um, education based on uh, you know online platform. So there are two kinds of um, you know a learning platform, uh, EBS TV, and the other one is EBS online system platform. So um, basically, they didn't have any kind of um, you know a problem you know, in terms of uh, you know accepting uh, receiving some sort of uh, relevant uh, teaching and learning based on a uh, you know platform. Okay. Mm. Uh, Professor, can you see on? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, and um, you know, thanks to the uh, EBS system, uh, basically teachers are uh, you know technically enjoying some sort of um, you know teaching and learning availability based on um, you know EBS system, and there are there is a um, you know the teachers community, and normally there are uh, ten thousand representative teachers who are. Uh, you know, requested from a uh, Ministry of Education and uh, you know, provincial office of education. Ten, more than ten thousand of um, you know teachers. Normally, they are making some uh, relevant um, number of um, you know uh, teachers uh, the content, and then they normally upload uh, you know content on the you know education platform, which were organized by the EBS system, and then. And uh, normally children can download, um, you know, content from the platform and then uh, they can uh, share them and then they can uh, study by themselves based on, uh, you know, self-directed, you know, the approach. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Pion. Uh, we're still going to come back to you so we can uh, gain some of those experiences that Korea already have, see how we can adapt that into uh, the Nigerian situation and system. But well, thank you very much for your thoughts and uh, what you shared so far.